This video is going to talk about the angles that are formed by chords, tangents, and secants as they interact with each other through a circle. Let's quickly review our learning targets. Learning target 5, I can find angles and arcs formed by intersecting chords. Learning target 6, I can find angles and arcs formed by tangents and secants. Our three important vocab terms for this lesson are chord, secant, and tangent. A chord is a line segment that has both a beginning and an end that actually are on the edges of the circle. A secant is a line that intersects the circle at two spots and exists both outside the circle as well as inside the circle. And a tangent only touches the circle at one spot. It exists only outside the circle and not inside the circle. When two chords intersect each, each other inside of a circle, they form four different angles. You can find the measure of these angles by using the following formula. The angle x is equal to arc number 1 plus arc number 2 divided by 2. I like to sometimes think about this as the angles is equal to the big arc plus the small arc divided by 2. Where is this big arc and this small arc? Well, the big arc would be the arc AD, and the small arc is opposite of it. It's arc BC. So arc number one and arc number two are the big arc and the small arc. And they're always right across and opposite from the angle. Let's use this formula to discover these measurements. We want to find, first, the value of x, which is angle TUV. So this x right here. What are the important parts of this circle that will help me figure out that angle? It'd be the arcs. Arc TV and arc UX are the arcs I'm going to use. So my big arc is 120 degrees, and my smaller arc is 70. I divide these by 2, and I'll get my answer. My angle is 95 degrees. To figure out angle Y, we need to remember that angle X and angle Y together form 180 degrees. So all I need to do, now that I have an X of 95, is subtract it from 180 degrees. I end up with an angle of 85 degrees. In this example, I want to find the measurement of arc LO. So I'm going to label that with an X. Arc LO is right here. And this is what we're going to discover. This is our X. The other arc we're going to use is opposite of it, and that would be arc in M. So let's plug in everything that we need. Remember, our formula is the angle is equal to the big arc plus the small arc divided by 2. In this problem, we are actually given the angle. The big arc would be 130. The small arc is the x. So let's plug in the angle degrees into the angle position in the formula. The big arc is 130. The small arc is our x. We still divide by 2. In this problem, not all the numbers go on the same side, so we need to work backwards. To get rid of the divide by 2, we times by 2. And now I'm going to subtract 130 from both sides. And that will give me my value of x. My x is 116 degrees. That's how we use the formula to work backwards when we want to find an arc and we were given an angle. Let's talk about secants and tangents. When we talk about these lines, these vertexes end up outside the circle. Each of the angles is not in the interior of the circle. They exist outside the circle. Because of this, the formula that we're going to use is slightly different. The formula that we're going to use is going to have a minus sign. So that's the big difference right now is minus the arcs instead of adding the arcs. Big arc is still the bigger of the two arcs.
and the small arc is going to be the arc that is also in between the lines. So each of these arcs that we're going to use in this formula always exists in between the lines that form the angle that we want to find. Let's try this example. Our formula is that the angle is equal to the big arc minus the small arc divided by 2. My big arc is 110 degrees. My small arc is 35 degrees. Let's plug them in. So my x angle is going to be equal to 110 plus 35 divided by 2. 110 plus 135 is 145 divided by 2. So my answer is 72.5 degrees from 145 divided by 2. In this example, I have a secant TV and a tangent WV and I want to figure out this arc. Let's write down our formula one more time. The angle is equal to the big arc minus the small arc divided by 2. In this problem, what am I given? I'm given the big arc, 145. I want to discover the small arc, and I am also given the angle. So let's plug in what we know. 30 is the angle outside the circle. The big arc is 145 minus the small arc, which is our unknown. So we put an x and we divide it by 2. Now it's time to solve this. Times by 2 on both sides to make the 2 go away from underneath our arcs. 60 equals 145 minus x. Now let's subtract 145 from both sides. I end up with negative 85 is equal to negative x. If negative x equals negative 85, then positive x equals positive 85. And there's my answer for x. I could, it might become difficult to remember when do I use the formula that has the adding and when do I use the formula that has subtracting. Think about what it looks like when two chords interact. When two chords interact, they kind of cross each other and make what looks like a plus sign. Since it looks like a plus sign, you want to use the formula where you have to add the arcs and then divide by two. Since in each of the pictures where there is tangents and secants and the angles are on the outside, we end up with these lines on the inside of the circle that kind of look like minus signs. And since they kind of look like minus signs, we want to use the formula that uses a minus. So look at the way that the lines appear inside the circle. If they look like a plus sign, you should use the formula where you add the arcs. If they kind of look like a minus sign inside the circle, you should use the formula that uses a minus of the arcs. If you have any questions, make sure you call me over. Don't forget to hit submit so I have record of you watching the video.